Hello again, this is Dave Myers with Paper Trail Financial. Today I'm going to go over a way you can summarize your daily transactions in QuickBooks in order to quickly evaluate your business's workflow. The Profit and Loss Detail Report captures most of our day-to-day -day activities, but for our purposes we want to make some minor modifications. I'm going to make some changes to the columns. We don't need the adjustment, we do want the name. For our purposes we don't need the memo. We do want payment terms. There are no classes in this file. We don't need clear, split. We want debits and credits, but we don't need the running balance. Now once QuickBooks has compiled the report, we'll export it to Excel. In Excel, we only want to use the range of data, just the column headers and the list of transactions. I'm going to delete the top three rows and the left seven columns in order to isolate the data. When I scroll down, you can see there are blank rows where the row headings and subtotals were, which also need to be deleted. To do this, we highlight all the blank cells in the first column and delete the entire row. Now with a clean range of data, we can insert a pivot table to summarize the information. We're going to start by putting the debits and credits in the value field. By default, Excel counts the transactions, not summarizes them. So I'll change the value field settings and also the format of the numbers. I can change the style of the table to improve its look. I'll also increase the font so it's more readable. One of the first things I like to look at is transaction type. One of the first things I notice here is that except for a small amount of bill credits, all credits are on invoices. The company hasn't used sales receipts or credit card sales. Everything is sold on invoice, making receivable management extremely important. Another issue that stands out is the proportion of checks to bills, which is roughly 4 to 1. Normally, you would see this proportion reversed. We can drill down on the check transactions to look at the details. As I scroll down, we can see there are multiple recurring transactions where using accounts payable might be a better practice than writing checks. It helps prevent duplicate payments to vendors. It helps better manage cash flow by tracking the payment due date. And it keeps financial records accurate by recognizing expenses when they are incurred rather than when they're paid. We can also take a closer look at credit card charges. To organize these, I'll sort the transactions alphabetically by name. In this case, all charges appear to be for normal non-recurring business expenses. We can look at the journal entries for the period to find out if there were any major adjustments. Here we can see that the journal entries are for the amortization of depreciation, interest, and prepaid expenses. Another way to look at the workflow is to sort the invoice sequence to find out if there are any missing numbers. We can also filter this table to focus on a specific period. In this case, I'll choose May.
An additional way to look at workflow is through the payment terms. Here, what stands out is the row titled blank. The amount of debits is to be expected because of the amount of checks written, but there appear to be credit transactions as well without a payment term. When we zoom in on the credit column, there appears to be one invoice without a term assigned. Now only one invoice out of over $400,000 in sales shows that the business is pretty diligent about keeping on top of receivables. Problems arise when there are large amounts of invoices without terms. Now let's alter the table by summarizing transactions by name. This gives us a summary of transactions for customers, vendors, and employees. I'll also include the transaction dates and group them by quarter. With the transaction summarized this way, we can identify any gaps in sales to customers or payments to vendors. For example, Baker Lighting number 20 had sales in the first quarter but not for the rest of the year. The cell phone company appears to have been billed and been paid consistently. The city of Bayshore was paid once in the first quarter but not again for the remainder of the year. I'm going to go back to our original table with transaction types. An additional way to look at a snapshot of the transaction data is with a pivot chart. I'm going to put this on a new sheet so we can see it a little more clearly. The chart provides a visual representation of your QuickBooks transactions which probably means that it also represents the time that is spent on each accounting task. In this case, invoicing clearly is the driver behind most of the day-to-day -day accounting work.